The tab stops are just like the sound. That when you hit the tab key, it'll stop at a point you set. And you can set the stop for the tabs at least one of three ways. The first way I'll show you will be setting them up here on the horizontal ruler, which if it's not there, then you want to come up here and click on the View tab, go to the Views group, and go to the Print Layout. And at the very least, if you're in there and you can't see it, then go to the Show group and check Ruler. Let me go back to the Home tab. Now, why would I want to set tab stops? Well, in this example, I want to create three columns of data. I want a list of all my favorite books in column one, the author for the books, and then their cost. And to set this up, let me go ahead and type in the label for the first column, which is books. And to be able to get over, like, let's say at the three inch mark, to type in the label for my second column, I could hit the space bar several times. Let me come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and turn on the codes so you can see when I add the spaces in code. But that would take quite a few, and it's not as efficient. Let me hit the Backspace key as hitting the Tab key. Now when I hit the Tab key, it goes to the half inch mark. So if I hit it again, it goes from half inch to one. It's a half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, and I'm finally over there. Now while that's more efficient than hitting the space bar, it's still not as efficient as using a tab stop. Because when I set a stop here at the three inch mark, all I have to do is hit the tab key once, and it doesn't go by the default every half inch, it just jumps right to it and stops at that tab stop. Not only that, but if I wanted to be able to get right to the two and a quarter inch to set my column, then I'd have to hit the backspace key and get at the two inch and hit the space bar a couple of times. And well, you can see the dilemma. The alignment may get tricky, especially with corresponding rows down below to keep it in the column to remember how many spaces I added. That's just horrifying. And you can begin to see when it comes to working with another document that does it this way and doesn't use the shortcuts like the tab stops. Also, when it comes to working with advanced features, the tab stop is the way to go. And we'll learn more about that in a later training video, but right now it's about tab stops. So let me go ahead and hit the backspace key. And then to add a tab stop, come with me, neighbor. Let's come up here and hover over. Looks like an L. You can see when I hover over it, in the pop-up it says left tab. That's a tab stop, but why does it say left? Because once I add it over here and I hit the tab key, it'll stop. But once it stops and I start typing in text at that stop, the alignment's going to be left. So for example, let me come up here and click on the ruler. Now you can't click anywhere on the ruler. If you try to click on the top portion of it, it won't add the stop. So you want to click on the bottom half of the ruler. I know it's so tiny it may be difficult, but let's try it. Click on it and boom, it adds the stop. It's kind of tiny. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there. So with my cursor flashing here, when I hit the tab key, boom. Oh, that's sweet. It went right over there and I didn't have to hit the tab key many times. And there's less code to work with, making my editing and working with this document more efficient. Now once I get there and I start typing in the text, the label for this column, author, how does it align off of that stop? Because once I get there, it stops, but the alignment is going to be left. So everything that I type in gets pushed over to the right to keep that left alignment off of that stop. Now what if I want to have one that does a center align? Does it have it? Of course it does. Come over here and all you have to do to find the next tab stop is to click on it and it toggles through. That one looks like an upside down T to find out what tab stop that is. Hover over it, wait for it. There you go, the pop-up says center tab. So to go ahead and add it, you wanna get rid of the other one because if I click and add another one and there's two tab stops, well, when I hit the tab key once, if the center is to the left of that stop, then that's fine, but when I hit the tab key again, it's gonna go over just like a centimeter. So we don't want that. Go ahead and click and drag that left tab off that when you hover over the little L and you can see the pop-up left tab, then click on it and drag it down and let go and it's gone. Gets rid of the stop, so it goes back to the default, half inch, that's fine. Let's go ahead and go back up. Remember, we're now on the center tab stop, so that's showing. That means that when I come up here and click on the bottom of the three, automatically shoots it right over and aligns it how? It aligns it in the center of the stop. Sweet. Now let's go ahead and hit the tab key and, oh, that's right. It's going back to the default because it doesn't have a stop to indicate that it should jump over to the stop. And then once it gets there, how to align it? So that's a good question. If I want to have the column, like let's say over at the six and a half inch mark, if I use the center tab, that's not going to work because some of it will be aligned to the left 
and then the other will fall over into the margin and probably wrap it down to the next line so I'd have the cost underneath the books and that's not going to work. So do I have a right? We gotta find the right tab here, pun intended. Come back up here, click to toggle, move off of it, then move back on it, and there's the right tab. So with it showing, come over here, and because I can't click right at the six and a half inch mark because the right indent marker's in the way, then what I like to do is to go ahead and just off to the left of it a little bit, click, and then drag it over and on to the indent marker and let go. Cool. So now it went over and it stopped. Now, how's it gonna align? Well, it should be the right, so cost, whatever I type, keeps it right aligned and pushes the text over to the left. Now when I hit the enter key, we have to enter in those stops again. No, I'm kidding. Up here you can see that it keeps it from the previous line, so whew, that saves a lot of work. So I can just go ahead and type in my first favorite book here, and then the author and the cost. Let's go ahead and type in the first one. Hit the tab key, oh, that's fancy. And that's it. Isn't that fun? So clean too. Now if you need to make any changes, like you're thinking, okay, this middle column shouldn't be at 3 because the Elstones of Shannara is looking a little bit too close to it, I want to move it over to the right. Be mindful of where the cursor is at because if you go ahead and you move that marker, it's going to move just the column for this row here, Terry Brooks, over. So if I click on that tick mark and I move it over to the right, see, that doesn't work. And also notice that that is in bold. And so what you want to do is you want to select all the text here, all the columns, and then go ahead and move it so we can keep everything in that column together. In fact, before I do that, when I click and drag and select all of it, look at that center tab now. It's faded. The majority of the rows for that second column are aligned, but there's one that's offset. That's why it's faded because it's not all together there. So. What we want to do is we want to go ahead and either undo that or come back down here and click in the bottom row and click and drag and move that center stop back to the three inch mark. I'll go ahead and hit undo. So let me go ahead instead and select everything here. And then when I select it, then I can come up here and notice it's solid. It's not faded, so everything's aligned just perfect. You can go ahead and click and drag it and keep the second column all together off of that tab stop and aligned in the center. Now when it comes to moving the tab stop, you know, if I want to get really particular because when I move it over, it kind of jumps a little bit. If you want to do it numerically, hold down the Alt key and wow, look at that. Up there on the horizontal ruler, you can see that the left hand side of that tab stop is 3.14 inches and the other one's 3.36. So if I go ahead and start sliding to the left, you can move it all around or I can try to even and bring balance to the force. And man, if you're good at this, uh, 3.25 on either side, okay, I'm going to let go of the left mouse and whew, that was tricky, but hey, you can at least narrow it down numerically at exactly what the left and right sections of the center tab stop is. And now you have some numbers to work with, so if you need to pass that information off to somebody else because they're creating a document and you can't send it to them for them to work with, you can give them the numbers. If you're having problems working with the tab stops on the horizontal ruler with the mouse because they're so teeny tiny, Another way you can go about working with them is by opening up the tabs window, and I'm going to show you three ways. One way is that if you do have a tab stop on the horizontal ruler, you can actually double click on it. I know it defeats the purpose because that's the whole point of what I'm about to show you is that you don't want to work with the horizontal ruler, but in any case it's there. So if you double click on it, it opens up the tabs window. Close out, and if you don't have any tabs on the horizontal ruler, or you do, but you don't want to double click on it because it's, again, challenging with those teeny tiny tabs, then come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and click on the Expandable Dialog Box button because down below, there it is, Tabs. Click on it, opens up the same window. Or, if you're on the Layout tab, you get the same Paragraph group, click on its Expandable Dialog Box button, and you got Tabs, same window. Now first off, before we started messing with tab stops, I went over the default stop when you hit the tab key. It's a half inch. So if you want to make it 0.4 inch or mess with that, go ahead and set the defaults. So that way, if you're not placing a stop position, that's the default stop every half inch. So we do have some stop positions, one at three and a quarter, but for which line or lines? Well, since I have the cursor on that line, it's only showing the two tab stop positions for that line. Well, actually, they're the same for all the lines, but 
point being, if you're going to make some changes in the window here and you want to apply it to all the lines, well, guess what? We have to go select all the lines. Okay. So come back up here, double click to open it back up. And then if I want the details of what that stop is, select it. And that's at the three and a quarter inch. And then down below, what alignment is it? Center. And the six and a half is right, right? Right. And so if I want to get rid of that, with it selected, I can say clear. And then after I click okie dokie, it removes it. So it's not there. So it collapses back to its default half inch. And if I want to go back and add it again, need to bring it back up, I can go ahead and take my chances and double click really fast as opposed to click, click, which is the same two clicks, but hey, I have to move a distance with those two clicks as opposed to a quick double click in the same place. In any case, to go ahead and add it back to six and a half, just come up here and click in the box and hit the backspace key and clear it and then type in 6.5. Now before I go ahead and click set, what's the alignment going to be for 6.5? to the right. So then I can go ahead and say set and it's right there it's been added so when I click okie dokie hey it's back. Okay something else that you probably saw in the window is leaders. In other words with my list of books here if I add quite a few more and I'm looking at like Scooby-Doo and I'm trying to lead my eye over to see who the author is and it's JK Rowling and the cost is 1750. Well you get the point. The leaders are to lead your eyes. So they lead it in a line or dots or dashes from the book over to Freddy. So you can keep track of it by looking at those dashes or dots or the line down below over to Freddy. So to set up the leaders for these columns to connect them as it were and to lead your eye from one column to the next, then of course we want to select all of them here. Or maybe we don't want to include the labels but just the data below each corresponding label. And then come up here, double click on the tab stop. And then we want to set a leader from, well, beginning to the three and a quarter inch mark. So to set it there, you want to come down and take me to your leader. And you get, whoo, a whole whopping three choices. Well, four, you get none, but you can do dots, dashes, or lines. So if I do dots and click set and click okie dokie, hey, it does lead my eye. Let me click over here. And then, oh, how about if I turn off my codes? Home, turn off codes. See, Scooby, I keep my eyes on that leader dot there, and it takes me right to Freddy. Now to add it over to the right-hand side for the same rows, let me go ahead and select them again. Come up here and double-click really fast. Six and a half. And you don't have to keep the same leader option. You can do something else like dashes. Click set, click okie dokie, and I know, it doesn't look apropos or aesthetically pleasing, but nonetheless, you can do it if you'd like. Now let me finish what I started going over some of the tab stops in the upper left hand corner. When you click to toggle through them, let's go over this one right here. It's the decimal tab. It's the upside down T with the point to the right of it. And so what that is used for is for anything that you have decimals in like our costs. So if I go ahead and click and drag and I say I want to get rid of the right tab in place of the decimal. So I clicked and dragged it off. And we've got the decimal selected, so I can come over here and click and place it right about there. Then notice, based upon that decimal tab, is stopping the tab that I have from the author to the cost, or the dollar amount here. But once it stops, how is it aligning it? Well, it's based upon that little dot. All the decimals are lined right up, aren't they? So if I come in here and I say 1005 we still have it lining up on the decimals so it pushes everything over to the left to keep those decimals just so. And let me go ahead and undo that a couple of times. Go back to our leaders. Let's click on the next one. This one right here is the bar tab. Hopefully somebody else picks it up for you. Ha, <laughs> kidding. Let me go ahead and click at the end and hit enter. Now when I hit enter before I bring up the bar tab, notice that the tabs will come with me on every single line. And if I don't want them on the next line after I hit the Enter key, I want to start a new set of columns without these tabs there. Once you click and drag them off, they're no longer there on that line. So when you hit Enter again, it repeats the previous line, which didn't have any. So you're not going to have any from that point forward. Now what about this bar tab? So I've got it selected. Let me come over here and say that I want one at the one inch mark. When I click to add it, it just adds a line. I mean, you can hold down the Shift key and hit that line on the keyboard and you'll see the difference between the two. It's a vertical line but not as tall as the bar tab. So let me go ahead and hit the backspace key and of course when I hit enter, 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 it keeps adding that bar tab 
because it repeats what I had on the previous row, which begin with that. So if I come up here and whew, see if I can get it so tiny, click and drag it off, and then hit enter, enter, it's not going to repeat it. Okay, next, let's come up here and click on it to toggle. We have the hover over it first line indent, which is what you see over here, the first line indent. Then you have the next one to toggle through, and if you hover over that one over here, it's the hanging indent. That one's also the hanging indent. So what that means is that when you have it selected and you come over and click like right here, it actually moves the hanging indent over to the one inch mark. Or let me go ahead and hit undo. I guess I could have clicked and dragged it back. You can also click on it right there and move it over as well. You can also click on, well, if you can get your mouse on it. There we go. I think I got it. Hanging indent. Click and drag that over as well. In any case, we'll talk about the hanging indent, the first line indent, and then the last one, the left indent, and then over here, the right indent. In a later training video, we'll work with it. But keep that in mind, so when it comes to working with that, you'll know that you can come over here and have the second option by toggling through the tab stops, which includes the first line indent and the hanging indent. And the last click that I made toggles me back through. I completed the circle of life. I'm now to the first tab stop when we started the tab stops training video. Left tab. Now the third and final way that I want to show you how you can add a tab stop to your document is with the double click. Now before I double click, I want to make sure that, well, I can't double click on the same line that the cursor is flashing, because if I do, it's going to do a paragraph alignment. It's not going to add a tab stop. And we'll talk about paragraph alignments in a later training video. But notice when I move the mouse along the same line as the cursor flashing, you can see I've got an I-beam with lines to the right of it. But of those lines, on the left-hand side of them are aligned perfectly, aligned left, and the right-hand side are jagged. So if I keep moving along the same line, notice how the lines flip when I'm at midpoint below the I-beam. If I double-click really fast there, it'll do a center align for that paragraph. And then over to the right-hand side, it'll do a right align. So we're not setting our alignments for that paragraph, so I don't want to double-click on the same line that the cursor's flashing. To add a tab stop, I'll have to do it on another line. And so if I go ahead and arrow up, there's no tab stops there. Arrow up, no tab stops there. So let me arrow back down to the last line. So I can double click on any one of these lines that the cursor's not flashing on, and it'll add a tab stop. What tab stop? It's always going to be the left stop. It doesn't matter what you have selected up here. Like if I go to the center stop, and I double click really fast, you see that? It's still the left tab stop. Let me hover over it. You can see it's left tab. So if you don't want to muck about and you want to double click somewhere really fast and not on the same line that the cursor is flashing, you can quickly add that left tab stop. Let me go ahead and hit undo. And you can turn the video off right now or you can continue on with me because I'm having an ADD moment. So ADD alert. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add. It doesn't matter on the tab stops really that I choose from, but I'll just go at the left. Come over here and click at the 2 inch mark. And then let me go ahead and double click on it to open it up, select the two inch, select my line leader, click set, click okie dokie, hit the tab key, I've got a line. And I want to hit the enter key on the keyboard and type in your signature. So I can print this off and have somebody just sign the line above where it says your signature. Isn't that fancy? Okay, your signature is not a line, so let's fix that. To align it underneath the line up above it, the leader that we just set, Let's go ahead and come up here and click and drag that left align tab stop off and click and add the center line right about there. And then come before your signature, hit the tab key, and hey, that looks pretty spiffy. Well, if it's not right on, I can click and drag that tab stop over and see if that's more centered. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.